Uh, welcome everyone in this new video tutorial about the multiplayer combat editor. In this video we are going to learn how to create modifiers. So what are modifiers? Modifiers are a class of objects which has the, proper, the, the, the possibility to dynamically modify stats, actions, combats and stuff like that at runtime, so while the game is running and to automatically uh, apply these modifications and remove them. So what's the benefit of this? Uh, we, can, we can build lots of different type of modifiers which we are going to use for several aspects of the game. For instance, uh, if you apply uh, a weakened effect to an actor, maybe you want to reduce the, the amount of damage it deals, so you're going to use a stat modifier. And but and this is a modifier used for crowd controls, uh, considering that weaken is a crowd control, for instance, or a status effect. Uh, but you, you might be using that this to actually, uh, I don't know, create a, a, a talent tree, a skill tree, where you can actually um, improve your skills and modify i don't know the the type of damage your skill deals or stuff like that you're going to use modifiers so modifier is a class which is going to be used uh, in a lot of places for uh, mce if you start customizing stuff uh, while the game is running so we're going to learn how to create that so go to your third person blueprint uh, folder your your project folder create a new folder call that modifier Oh, I've already created one. So we have the modifier folder. And we want to right click, create a new blueprint class. And we want to create a modifier. So we want to create a child class of modifier, which means uh, the class we are, we are creating uh, inherits from all the properties MC provides uh, in modifiers. So if we select that, this blueprint has all the code MC provides automatically because it's a child of uh, BP modifier. We're going to call that BP my base modifier, for instance. And we are going to create, we are going to open it up like this. So in there, you have a lot of stuff to do, a lot of stuff to do. But the first thing you want to call is events begin play. You want to call that. And this is the event called when that modifier is being spawned. So this modifier is an object which is the cheaper thing to spawn in the world. So it's, it costs nothing to spawn modifiers. But the logic you code inside can cost stuff. And what we want to do here, we, we will just print something to our screen when the modifier spawns. And you can see the print string bring the, uh, a wire which we do not see often, well context, context object. And if we write, and it's actually asking us what actor, what object in the world should be the origin of the print. Because objects are shipped to spawn, they do not have a reference to the world, so they need uh, that something in the world tells him uh, what is the world. So we need to right click, get mod target. This is the object which is affected by the modifier, like this. So when that modifier is spawned, it's going to print hello for 10 seconds, for instance. And we're going to see how we can quickly add that to our character. So we are just going to open up our character blueprint. I'm just going to specify that I want that character to be spawned. And not the other, and not the character of the other tutorial I made. So 
back in our third person character or your blueprint character, whatever, in the event begin play, I'm going to drag the begin play all the way up and I'm going to colorize that a little bit like this just so I cannot miss that. All right. It's going to, to make the trick. So whenever you want to add a modifier, you can do it in a pretty easy way, which is just type in add, right click anywhere, type in add modifier. You can call this node anywhere. And it's asking what modifier you want to add and what is the target of the modifier. And in our case, we can just plug that in. And in our case, we just created my base modifier. And what do we want? What is the target of that modifier? We are going to set our third person character. So we're just going to drag a wire out of the target pin, type in this, press enter. And we are telling the modifier that its target is actually ourselves. I mean, this is referencing the the, this blueprint, so the character. So we are adding my base modifier to our character and the modifier says hello when it spawns. So if we are hitting play, it will say hello. Why does it say it four times? Because we have two characters on two screens, on two machines. So this is triggering on every machine. So you do not have to care about you do not have to care about uh, multiplayer. This is automatically taken care of. So this is triggering everywhere. But so you can quickly add modifier like this, and then you have a lot of features you can call, which are going to be the subject of other video tutorials. But we're going to cover real, real quick how you can. We are going to we are going to let that modifier B for now. I deleted it, but actually we want that to spawn because we want to make some some little check real quick. Uh, my base modifier, this is what we were creating. And so we clearly see it was specifying hello when we hit play, but there are, because we spawned it, but there are all other way to spawn modifiers other built-in way and one of them one of the main being the status effect and this is the subject of another video tutorial so maybe you do not have a folder with status and, and an example status if you do not have one i suggest you check that the video where we create one which is the status implementation but if you do have one just open it up and instead of add, adding a proc effect just delete the proc effect say add modifier add status modifier say my base trigger like this then go to one of your one of the ability you have and in addition to applying damage apply status and apply the status you created example status So in there, we could see hello being spawned because now the status, the, the, the modifier is being spawned when I hit someone with my skill. And there is, so this is another way this is one of the built-in way to spawn uh, using statues is one of the way to spawn modifiers and it's actually taking care of adding it and removing it from the target so you do not have to care about that because if we go to our third person character when we are actually adding a modifier like this it's adding it forever 
because we do not have any fun logic that removes it. And statues do have a built-in logic that remove the modifier they are adding, the modifiers they are adding. You could be calling this uh, how many times, um, how many time you want, and adding how many modifiers you want. And you see there is a return value pin which gives you the modifier which spawned, so you can actually take care of removing it, or uh, you you can do things about it. You you have a direct reference to the modifier you spawned, so you can store that in a variable, for instance. So the, this variable, this variable is actually the status you just pwned there, and you can actually destroy it by calling end play. So for instance, if you do that, it's going to add the modifier and it's going to destroy it afterwards. And you, so this is basically the built-in logic statues are implementing, among other things. And there are other built-in MC features that are using modifiers, but they are going to be the subject of, of other video tutorials. So in this video, we just saw how you could be spawning a modifier, but we did not do anything with that yet. So in, the, in future videos, we are going to see everything you can do in the feature list of your modifiers because there is there is a lot of things you can do so hope you guys enjoyed that video hope to see you in the next one bye bye